please remember to check out our other videos and click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you get notifications each time we upload another video. Today we're working on this 2014 22 kilowatt hour Renault Zoe. It's fitted with a 43 kilowatt onboard charger, so very versatile, but sadly it won't charge on single phase or three phase. We're going to show you what's involved in the diagnosis and repair and to show you that these cars are repairable and contrary to popular belief, aren't a complete write off when things do go wrong. Uh, so we've got a problem with the car not charging. Um, so it doesn't charge on single phase or three phase. Um, when you plug it in, it does all the initial checks, it locks the cable in and everything, and then it just doesn't send any current to the battery pack. So um, the charging process starts with uh, this top unit here, which is called the battery charging block. And um, from the initial test we've done with the diagnostic equipment, it looks like the fault is within here. So we're gonna get this out of the car and then uh, take it apart and go from there. Connections on here to stop them coming undone inadvertently, because they've got high voltage on them. Obviously we don't want them vibrating loose while driving. There's a uh, specific, ways to disconnect them and you have to push all the right bits in in the right order excellent and just to be clear this this is made safe isn't it By, yes we've, yeah. we've already isolated the high voltage system to make it safe to work on stripping off the charger and junction box took pete roughly 20 minutes so pete what do you actually think the fault is that's going to rectify because this, this won't charge at all on single phase three phase correct yeah. so um i under here there's a charging filter yep. um, and there's a couple of relays that determine whether it's on single phase or three phase. Um, that side of things we believe is all working because in the rectifier we can see using diagnostic tool that we've got the right mains voltage coming into there. So we believe that everything is okay up to that point. Yep. Um, and we're suspecting a possible current sensor or rectifier fault which is, is roughly under this point here, but I'll show you when we get it all apart. So this is where the power comes up from the battery. And this is also used as a junction box as well as the, the uh, battery charger block. So um, this one and this one are just electrically connected together inside. So the power comes in there and out there and it just, just makes it easier in terms of cabling. Um, it's also uh, connected to this, which is the um, cold market heater. So on this car, it's blanked off, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> but um, if you buy this car somewhere it's really cold, it has a high voltage heater that runs off that circuit. Just, just a, a PTC? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, in addition to the heat pump. So in this country, they've got just a heat pump and a 12 volt heating element. Okay. And then in a the cold climate, they, they also have this. And then on the other side, this is our power supply for our air conditioning. So again, that's just joined to the DC circuit via a couple of fuses that are in here. Um, and then on the charging side, this is what connects to the charging port on the front of the car. Um, so we have our um, three lives, because it charges on three phase, um, neutral earth, and then um, uh, we've got a little interlock um, connection in there as well, which is that top corner one, so that it knows if it's been unplugged to make it all safe. Yeah. Um, this connector here, is what communicates with the charging port so that's connected to the front of the car as well and then this one is used for communication with the rest of the car and it, it powers this unit up from the 12 volt circuit um, and this connection goes down to the motor and this is unique to the the uh, Renault charging system and um, it's to do with the way it works which we'll go into a bit more detail moment all right pete so this looks stripped down yep how long, so, how long did this take just to just to strip down out of curiosity um i've had a few apart before and it, it it takes under an hour to sort of get it down to this level okay. um might take a little bit longer it looks quite complex yes at first. yeah so um inside here um is our filtering circuitry so um the the main reason that is there is to allow any spikes of interference to be stopped rather than finding their way back into the household electricity circuit. Um, also make sure we've got um, a nice a smooth interference free um, electricity supply for the rest of it. Um, that then leaves um, on these three wires here. Um, it then comes into the base unit so I'll just um, move these components a little bit so you can see what's what. So. That then comes into here. Um, in parallel with that is this capacitor block. So this has got three capacitors. 
um, inside it and that just does a bit more filtering to make sure that we've got a nice, um, gets rid of any interference that might be on that electricity um, signal. And um, it then comes into this unit. So we have our um, three phase or single phase AC coming in here, depending on what we're charging on. And then on the outside of that, we, we have DC. So that charges it from AC to DC. Although at this point, it isn't at the right voltage to charge a battery. That then happens at a later stage. But the point of this is to convert the, the AC into DC. Yeah, so um, you can stick it in the battery. That's it. Um, so within this unit, um, this, this comes as this whole unit um, if, you, if you buy a new one. But um, just to take it apart and show you what's actually in it. Um, um, this um, is actually a um, Infineon circuit board and this is what actually does the, the rectifying. So inside here it's, it's got power transistors that do the conversion from AC to DC. Um, also within this unit it's got a little current sensor there and um, that's for the electronics to know how much current is leaving this circuit, make sure it can keep track of how it's charging. Okay. And then in here, here we've also got the control unit as well. So this handles the communication with the charging point, it handles the cable locking um, and it communicates with the rest of the car. This will also pulse the transistors in here in order to set our charge rate. So when we talk to the charging point and the wall, it might be wall box might say you're only allowed 16 amps yep. and it's by pulsing these transistors at the right rate yep. that we, we get that desired current. That all sounds very, very complex. But if you look on Pete's top here, you'll see that he's a top technician finalist. So that's why he knows about stuff like this <laughs> and nobody else does. So what, what's the actual problem then, then Pete? What's, what's causing it to not, not charge? Um, it's actually this unit here. So okay. um, we knew that we had um, a decent supply um, up to this point, because yeah. we can see um, yeah. the voltage is measured within this unit. We can read it using the diagnostic mm. tool. Yeah. And um, so we knew we had voltage up to this point, which rules out anything before here. And um, then from here, it goes into this inductor and through the motor windings, we can test them all manually with a multimeter, make sure they're okay. And we, we found the fault to be within here. Okay, so how long would this job take you to diagnose and replace that on a customer's car? Um, probably in total, including removing this from the car, um, in total, you probably get it all done in about four or five hours. But it's nice to know they're fixable because this is quite a common fault on the Zoe, isn't it? Yeah, and, and, and what's nice as well is on this unit, you don't have to buy the whole unit. You can, you can purchase this part, um, which is the filter. You can buy the capacitor module. You can buy the rectifier module and you can buy this, which is an inductor as well, um, all as separate parts. So as, as long as you've got the means to diagnose where the fault lies, yep. um, it's a much cheaper repair than replacing the whole unit and obviously more sustainable as well. And that's where you come in, diagnosis. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Pete's just going to give us a quick heads up on how the charging works on the Zoe. It's quite a complex system, isn't it? It certainly is, yeah. Yep. Um, it's a very clever system, quite complicated. So once it leaves the rectifier, which we've just seen, it travels through this inductor. An inductor works like an electrical flywheel to smooth out the current rather yep. than a, a, a capacitor would smooth out the voltage. This will smooth out the current. Yeah. It then leaves by that single pin terminal that we saw earlier. It then makes its way down to the motor yep. and it comes back up through the motor through these three wires here. Um, so it's evenly spread through the windings of the motor and then the inverter, which is the same unit that's used when you drive in the car, pulses those windings in the motor on and off and that's what steps our voltage um, up to the voltage required to charge the battery. The uh, voltage then comes up through here, back down there and then back to the battery. So in order for it to charge correctly, all of these components need to be working properly. Brilliant. So that sounds simple. Yeah, and we've, um, they're generally a reliable system, but we, we have seen a number of different faults, so the correct diagnosis is essential. Right, so it's all reassembled. Um, we're going to get it back in the car, um, connect up the essentials for it to work, and then make sure it works before we put all the um, wipers and everything back on top. Nice. Oh, how long has it taken you to get to this point, Pete, would you say? Um, we're probably um, three and a bit hours in. So. Okay, excellent. Okay. Refitting the charger and junction box took slightly longer at half an hour. So Pete has reconnected all the gubbins under here. So nice quick job. And then if we come around to the driver's seat, so electric motor, is that because the MSD's out? Uh, yes, it, it will show that message um, because the uh, interlock circuit is open. So. Okay, yeah. So reconnecting the MSD, yeah. 
and then you can see the message has gone now. Oh, there we go. Look. So it's low on charge then, I'm guessing there, Pete. Uh, yes, it's, it's only got about one or two percent left in it at the moment. So okay. So hopefully, fingers crossed. If you plug that in, is that going to charge? Uh, it might charge, or I might need to uh, uh, clear the errors first. But we'll um... give it a go. Oh, that's good. Is that charging? Uh, that's doing the checks at the moment when it flashes fast like that. There we go. Oh, wow. The buzz. Yeah, yep. yeah. It's now charging. Brilliant. So, um, I've, I've put it all loosely back together, bled up the cooling system, and now we know that it works, I'm going to uh, put the last few covers back on, windscreen wipers back on. Um, always like to just make sure it's okay before we completely put it back together. And that's job done. So, and then it will be done. Yeah. Nice work. A further 30 minutes was spent rebuilding the scuttle and refitting the wipers, and that was it. A cracking repair for under £500. For clarity, if you had this carried out at the dealer, they often replace the motor, inverter and charger as one, and that runs into thousands. Music